Sisters, brothers, fellow socialists, thank you for joining this discussion and thanks to all the speakers who preceded me. We are, as many have said, facing the most right-wing reactionary administration in at least a generation. But this is also a weak and divided government with no mandate from ordinary people. This last week, Trump's approval ratings hit 35%, lower than Richard Nixon during the Watergate scandal. As we have shown already, even before 100 days of his administration have lapsed, Trump can be defeated. From JFK to CTAC, our mass nonviolent civil disobedience movement that shut down the airports was, as David Parsons correctly said, the single most important factor that brought a stinging defeat to Trump on his attempted Muslim travel ban. And now, workers across America, including Republican and Trump voters, have revolted against the attempt to repeal the Affordable Care Act, and Trump Care has been defeated. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, this administration can be defeated, but there is nothing automatic about it. We will need a strategy, a socialist strategy. But what does a socialist strategy look like? Let's take the example of Seattle. Superficially, every member of the Seattle City Council and Mayor Murray are, and actually everyone elected from here, the State House or Senate, or wherever, considers themselves a progressive, and there are certainly no Republicans on the City Council. And many of our progressive ordinances and resolutions on the City Council have in the end been unanimous the $15 minimum wage, the recent $3 billion divestment from Wells Fargo. <laughs> Renters' rights, like the Carl Hagelin law against slumlords, and the recent cap on renter move-in fees. All of these, <laughs> all of these have been unanimous votes, but in reality, Beneath the surface, the vast majority of what we have won in recent years was unanimously hated by the corporate wing of the council and the mayor and fiercely opposed behind closed doors. The Wells Fargo divestment was blocked for two months in Council Member Tim Burgess's committee until Trump was elected, and then it dawned on Burgess that he couldn't get away with being on the same side of the Dakota Access Pipeline issue as Donald Trump. <laughs> the demand by Seattle's working class for a $15 minimum wage was either ignored or mocked by Seattle's Democratic Party politicians. I have a story to share with you. Some of you may have heard this before. Only weeks after I was elected to the city council, two council members came into my office, sat me down, and said, you may have succeeded in rabble-rousing enough to uh, you know, sneak past the election and get here, but we're here to tell you that your agenda is not going to work here, and we're not going to allow you to pass 15. And less than six months later, we had a unanimous vote on 15. <laughs> And sometimes, your enemies can give you the best compliments. <laughs> Recently retired real estate lobbyist Jamie Durkin, just a few weeks ago, angrily complained to local media that the council members, quote, say all the right things in their offices, then they get out on the podium and it all goes south, unquote. 
Going south meaning going unfavorably for the landlord lobby. He attributes this correctly to the militancy of the army in city council chambers. He goes on to say, quote, even some of the most sane and rational council members drift left because they are afraid of Sawant, unquote. <laughs> but sisters and brothers, what they are afraid of is the lethal combination of having a movement on the streets and that movement's voice in city council. One of the corporate council members, I won't say her name, recently told an ally of ours that she hates our Red Army. But that is, in fact, how we've been able to win the mass pressure put on these council members by our movement. And we need to take this movement forward. We need to build a Red Army nationally to defeat Trump. One, David and Jesse from the labor movement have said, we need to use our social power against Trump and the billionaire class. We need to hurt them, where, we need to hit them where it hurts by shutting down their profit machine. <laughs> On May 1st, May Day, which is also International Workers' Day, and in America, historically, a day for immigrant rights activism. Hundreds of thousands of immigrant workers this year will be organizing for strike and protest actions. Unions and worker centers in California, over 340,000 workers have already voted to go on strike on May 1st. And we have seen inspiring examples in Seattle. C uh, Seattle Equality Educators, the left caucus inside the Teachers Union, the Educators Union, Seattle Education Association, has already carried out a valiant effort to take the conversation of strike action forward. David Parsons has talked about the activism of the United Auto Workers Local 4121, the local that represents the graduate student workers right here on this campus who will be fighting back on May 1st. And the King County Labor Council, led by Nicole Grant, who unfortunately was unable to join us today, has recently passed a resolution, as was mentioned before, supporting strike and protest actions by all labor unions in this region. Of course, we need to be sober about this. I don't think that we are in a position to have an actual general strike on May Day 2017, but it is incredibly important to push the possibilities of strike and protest actions as far as possible. Because as was said before, this is not a matter of abstract propaganda. The power that working class people hold and that is the power that unites us all despite our other differences. That is the power to go on strike and refuse to work to generate profits for the capitalist class. And that is why, while formal strike action may be limited on May 1st, it is incredibly important to support the unions who do go on strike and to have a support for the re-emergence of the conversation around strike action. And making May 1st the starting point, the beginning of a summer of resistance against Trump and towards building, rebuilding real working class power. But we also need to pair the energy of our movement with a political strategy. As we have shown in Seattle, it is a powerful thing to have a candidate of social movements in office. 
when the elected representative remains accountable to the movement regardless of the pressures from corporate politicians. So we need more social movement candidates in office. We need socialist candidates and left independent candidates running for office around the country. By electing independent candidates, socialist candidates, we can build toward a new par party, a political party for working people that rejects corporate money and corporate power. That is why it is so important that John Grant is running and has agreed to run as an independent democratic socialist, not taking a penny in corporate money. John is a longtime fighter for housing affordability in this city, which has become unlivable for most of us. He stands for rent control and a massive expansion of high quality affordable public housing as an alternative to the dysfunctional market. That is why it is so important that Nikita Oliver, as a leader of the No New You Jail, block the bunker and Black Lives Matter movement and candidate of the People's Party is challenging Democratic mayor and corporate politician Ed Murray. And sisters and brothers, the real base of the Red Army that has been a thorn in the side of the Seattle corporate establishment since 2015 is a Marxist organization called Socialist Alternative. I'm a member of Socialist Alternative, and I believe that we need to be talking about building social movements and socialist organizations. Why? Because socialists understand what social power is and how to build it. This is not an abstract point. Winning victories for the working class under capitalism does come down to courage, self-sacrifice, and collective work. But importantly, it also comes down to the ability of social movements to employ the most effective tactics and strategies towards victory. And as such, Socialist Alternative was not incidental to winning the victories that are listed before. It has been the political backbone of devising tactics and strategies that have led us to victory. And that is why I believe we need to build a social, socialist movement. And also importantly, in addition to doing that, Seattle and nationally, we need to build maximum unity in action against Trump's dangerous agenda. This unity has, been, has, has to be among socialists, immigrants, women, LGBTQ people, progressive Democrats, Bernie Krats, the labor movement, single-payer activists, and environmental activists. But this united movement, our united movement, will be successful only if we refuse to limit ourselves to what is acceptable to the corporate democratic establishment. It is not enough for the city's politicians to say that Seattle is a sanctuary if the police cooperate with ICE or with the Trump administration on raids and deportations. And as Mayor Ed Murray did when he sent Seattle police to SeaTac Airport, where police from many jurisdictions harassed peaceful protesters standing up against the Muslim ban. It is not enough to call this a sanctuary city if our immigrant communities are being driven out of Seattle because they cannot afford to live here. We need rent control. We need a massive expansion of affordable housing. And as John Grant says, 25% of all new housing should be required by the city to be affordable to the working class. <laughs> the
the greater Seattle area now also now has a dubious distinction. This area is home to the world's two richest people. Bill Gates, who is well on his way to become a trillionaire, and Jeff Bezos. This is obscene. We need to tax the rich in Seattle. <laughs> and last but not least, sisters and brothers, we need to build a movement not only to fight against Trump, but for a fundamentally different kind of society. A society based on equality, environmental sustainability, and solidarity. A society without racism and sexism and poverty. That's a socialist society. But we will not, of course, establish socialism in Seattle alone. But what we can do in Seattle is spread the example of our victories here, of our socialist strategy, and help build a powerful nationwide movement against Trump, against the billionaire class, and against capitalism. Solidarity.